Good morning, Wasteland. Mr. G bringing you cross out myself, Coffee, and today we're going to talk about modules. All the little fancy doodads and bits you can add to your vehicles to make them do interesting things and or perform better. I'm going to try and not waste too much time on this one. I'm going to jump right in and just start talking about stuff. So if you're, uh, you know, you've been in cross out for a while, probably not going to be a lot new for you in this. Uh, if you're a relatively new player, though, Hopefully this will help you out. So the first modules you're going to run into as a new player are coolers and radiators. Uh, and they do the same thing. No, they don't. Uh, in drastically different ways. So coolers are going to rapidly speed up how quickly your heat cools off. So look at that. So we've got three cords there. We're firing away. Once I let go of the trigger, they cool off really rapidly running to blue coolers. Now let's say I'm going to run uh, a radiator. And in this particular one, uh, we've got purple ones, just so you can see the difference. And this is a great part to fuse. If you want to get a thermostable radiator, the bonus on these is great. So, you're going to be able to notice that we're able to fire much longer before we hit the overheat threshold. However, once I stop firing, cooling is going to be slower. But radiators let you keep shooting for a lot longer time. I prefer radiators in a lot of builds just because you can have that sustained damage when you run into some guy and you're doing 1v1. Who can shoot longer often is the person that's going to win. However, if you're doing a build that involves shotguns or something like that, uh, you're often going to want to find yourself with at least one cooler uh, on your build. Now, the other most important uh, piece of hardware that you're going to want to run is the Chameleon. Uh, so once you get into higher power score matches, you're going to find this is super, super handy. Not only because it makes you go invisible, it lets you cloak. Uh, you can break missile lock from hurricanes and pyres, which you're going to see uh, all the time in higher power score matches. But, I mean, there's really not much to say about this other than it's going to make you invisible. Um, you can get detected Visually, if you get close and someone's paying attention, they can detect you visually. Uh, radar detector is going to be able to detect you relatively close range. Uh, and the Oculus is going to go ahead and pick you up. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the Oculus. So I've got some footage of the Oculus, which I'm going to throw in here so you guys can see how it works. But essentially, what it does... As if a cloaked build is getting within about 100 meters of you. Let's see what it actually says. Um, 125 meters. Uh, or 150. It'll start beeping. It'll be like beep, 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 beep. And it'll point in the direction of whatever cloaked guy is coming at you. However, usually that cloaked guy is going to be running shotguns. Or lances. Or harvester. And by the time it starts beeping, you're kind of already hosed. See footage of Mr. G using Oculus. God, our team is just having a bad day right now. Oh, well, oh, cloak. Cloak build incoming. Oh my god, that's actually really handy. Okay. So, it's kind of a waste of an energy. It's not great. Um, now, let's talk about the Tormentor, okay? This guy buffs melee weapon damage um, for five seconds. So, basically, it kind of like heats it up. Uh, spin like crazy. It increases the damage uh, of your melee weapon. So this is with one on a harvester. Now these stack, which is why we're going to try and show you guys the difference between running one of these uh, versus running five of these. Now you don't see people running these a lot. You just don't. Um, because that energy is usually used better elsewhere. So there we go. Yep. Wasn't very exciting. Um, now let's try with five. Okay. So. It used to be able to actually tell that it was heating up. It would, like, turn orange. I know, some of these builds are just super bad. But, all right, let's, let's see if we can visually tell that it's on. Used to turn orange. Doesn't do that anymore, which is kind of a bummer. Um, terrible test. Absolutely terrible test. Um, because I need to make a Leviathan with a big cab and a bunch of armor for testing this stuff but just take my word for it that it does stack if you run a whole bunch of these um but it's not the most efficient use uh, of your energy all right we're gonna look at 
two different kinds of scope. We got the regular scope and we got the neutrino. I'm gonna show you guys the difference between those two. Standard scope has uh, one level of zoom. That's it. One level of zoom. Not, nothing too fancy there. Now the neutrino, a little bit different. Uh, it has two levels of zoom. You gotta hit the middle mouse button for the second time. But it'll also show you uh, fuel tanks and uh, generators and anything that'll blow up, which is why it kind of has that weird infrared, ultraviolet kind of uh, look to it when you're using it. But on this particular one, uh, I didn't put any fuel tanks on there for you guys to see because I just missed cheese and really tired. So I apologize for not putting a fuel tank on this build so you guys can see that. Let's do that. Uh, right now, let's just put a hazardous gen on this thing so you guys can see the uh, what the neutrino scope does there. All right, let's try this again. Now you can see there it is. Yep, and we got one more level of zoom. Uh, this is really handy if you're running scorpions, which I know a lot of people can't, or anything that has armor penetration. Um, because, oh, look, there it is. We blew up the hazardous generator. All right, so pretty straightforward. You get an extra level of zoom, and it highlights parts that go kaboom all right next up we're going to talk about a couple things i'm just going to jump into storage here we're going to talk about radars and uh, radar detectors now radars are going to increase your enemy detection radius significantly uh the purple one up to 600 the blue 450 and the white up to 300 now this other guy the radio is going to let you transmit that data to allies within 450 meters so you're always going to be wanting to carry a radio if you're in a guy that wants your team to come help you or people to know where the enemy is so you're going to want to run that now however there's also this guy the radar detector how's the radar detector different from a radar um it can detect guys in cover guys like behind a bush or around a corner um and it can do that from 250 meters for the blue and it can do that up to 400 meters for the purple one. Now, the thing they don't tell you is it actually transmit. Well, I guess they did put it in there. Now, it used to not be in the description. Radar detector will function as a radio. So if you have a radar detector in your build, you do not need to add a radio. That would just be superfluous. You do not need it. Um, okay. So let me just show you without radar. Uh, we'll spawn some bots here. You can see the bots, but they're not showing up on my map, and they're not getting highlighted with red pips because they're outside of range. Now, every cab has a built-in detection radius that's just not very good. You can see that by hovering over the cab in the parts menu, but I gotta get super close to these guys before, yeah, there it is, like 100 meters. It's like starts detecting this without a radar. Now, let's say I slap on the old purple radar here. Dun, 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 dun. We spawn some bots. I can see them from here. Look at that. So across the map, they're getting highlighted. So if you're running any sort of sniper build where you're going to want to be shooting at guys from across the map, just take a radar. Take a radar. Just do yourself a favor. Take a radar, or even better yet, take a radar uh, detector uh, if you can. Um, now, next up, we've got... Where did I put it? Where did I put it? There it is. Aegis, which is uh, super handy. Now this one you can make work a lot better if you run it with a cheetah and you run it with Bigfoots. Uh, but essentially, it is a shield. It's a shield that you can uh, run on your own. It's going to surround your vehicle. It's got a limited radius. It can be penetrated by scorpions. Uh, and melee guys can just drive right through it and uh, shoot you. And you can see it doesn't stay on very long. If you want to see some funny videos, look at my infinite shield troll videos. Uh, running three of these. Refuse for cooldown because they're totally fun, cheesy weapons. But really, you've got to be really good to know when to trigger those so that you're going to like block a cannon shot or burst damage with those. Now, I forgot to put it in here, so I'm going to do it right now. Another thing that's kind of cool is it's not the shield dropper, it is the where is it? Where is it? What is it called? Um. It's the shield thing you can drop that your whole team can use. And what is it called, Mr. Cheek? Can't remember. All right, sorry guys, I remember. It's the barrier, okay, this is the barrier. Now this thing will drop a shield 
that you and your buddies can use. Um, it's going to be stationary, though, but it's going to have a much wider protection radius. And takes a little bit to fire up, which is kind of the bummer, but look at how much wider that is. Um, and it stays active for longer uh, than the Aegis does. So, it's like a little mini Aegis. I would argue that's almost more useful uh, in some situations than the Aegis is in particular. All right, we're going to just wrap up. Just talking about a few other bits and bobs in here, what you're going to want to pair with some of these. So if you're running a cloak, uh, you're going to want to pair it with uh, a cheetah in Bigfoots if you can. Because this is going to reduce module cooldowns. You're not going to want to run cloak with like an oppressor or colossus because those are going to be affecting your weapon reloads. Um, and like I said before, the thermostable radiator is a fantastic radiator to fuse because it just makes it 30% more effective. There are very few fusions that give you a bonus improvement of 30%. Um, as for the radar, the purple radar doesn't give you that much more over the blue. Blue does 450 uh, and the purple does uh, 600. And you can see that it's going to weigh 180 versus the weight of 72. So it's way heavier. You're not often going to see people run that. Now the blue chameleon and the purple chameleon, these are great to run fuse too because both of the fusions for these are good. Um, the charged fusion makes it stay active longer, and the water-cooled fusion just reduces the cooldown on this thing. I mean, other bits of hardware that we've got in here is we've got boosters, which you click them and they boost you and they make you go faster. They have fuel now. Uh, and you got the coupler, lets you hook to other people that are also running couplers. I didn't put the car jack in here because I didn't think anyone needed uh, a lesson on the car jack. And then lastly, if you've been under a rock, Put a fuel barrel and a fuel tank on your build, and you can, uh, they stick, um, they don't stack if you put more than one of each, but you can put a fuel barrel and a fuel tank, uh, which can net you up to a maximum of 15 fuel, um, per match, which you can then sell or you can use to go on raids. So, guys, that is pretty much it. We were just talking about cloaks and tormentors and Oculus and that. Yeah, I'm tired. That's it. Um, any other tips or things you guys want to put in about modules, stick them in the comments. Uh, and if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. And if you want cross out uh, in your inbox every day, hit that subscribe button. And if you need cross out friends or you want to get free packs and giveaways, do check out the Discord. Link in description. I'm going to catch y'all later. Taking this thing over the jump. Good old starter truck. Good old starter truck. Mr. G.